Greetings and welcome back to Nessora's YouTube channel. In this video I will again stick my neck out and highlight a significant issue reflected in the current trend of disregarding Expiril as a powerful long-lasting post-operative pain management option. A recently published paper in anesthesiology exemplifies many aspects of the misguided direction that the regional anesthesia community has taken in discrediting Expiril's potential to enhance the value of regional anesthesia. As a preface to this video, I will disclose that this video has not been supported by the industry, but it is an honest personal review on this matter from someone that has spent a decade researching the drug, treating patients, and receiving Expiril three times as a patient. It is fair to say that the widespread implementation of ultrasound and regional anesthesia has been crucial in saving the field of peripheral nerve blocks. Without ultrasound, the field might have otherwise been obsolete today due to the lack of reproducibility with landmark and nerve stimulation-based techniques. However, despite the reproducibility of these techniques with ultrasound today, we have all the techniques and all the precision, but regional anesthesia still faces significant challenges due to the limited duration of existing local anesthetics and additives. I completely agree with Dr. Peter Marhofer's team's statement in the article, which astutely addresses the deficiencies in regional anesthesia. I also agree that we have hit a brick wall and there's no future for regional anesthesia without ability to prolong analgesia with long-acting local anesthetics. We do know that the catheter is not ideal, they either fail or they may be ineffective. But while Expiril or liposomal bupivacaine is the first of its kind, the anesthesiology establishment seem to be intent on discrediting it. After Pasira Pharma, the manufacturer of Expiril, sued the Anesthesiology Journal for tarnishing the drug in its publications, the publication of the article we discuss in, in this video suggests that the journal appears to be willing to publish any submission that contributes to discrediting the drug. Okay, this may be an overstatement, but this could be seen as a payback time now when the lawsuit is over. This publication serves as an evidence that we collectively are failing to help regional anesthesia grow. For example, the authors conclude that Expirel is not a suitable sole drug for intraoperative regional anesthesia. But wait a minute, the drug was never intended to be or was approved by regulatory agencies as an intraoperative anesthetic. How could such a statement appear in the conclusion section of the flagship journal of anesthesiology? Moreover, how can the authors make a conclusion about Expiril's suitability as a sole intraoperative anesthetic when their study was conducted on volunteers and not on patients undergoing actual surgery? Interestingly, the authors defend their methodology by using an ulnar nerve block even though Expiril is not approved for this indication by regulatory agencies. They argue that there should be no specific pharmacodynamic differences between an interscaling block for which Expiril is approved and a distal nerve block such as the ulnar nerve block that they used. I agree with this argument, but that raises an important question. If Expiril is approved for complex indications such as interscaling, sciatic, femoral blocks, adductor canal blocks, why wouldn't the FDA approve it for all nerve blocks based on similarity and absence of toxicity as the authors are attesting to? This question is particularly pertinent and important in a situation where the United States is battling the opiate epidemic. An Expiril has the potential to significantly reduce or eliminate postoperative opioid use. The negative outcome publications all point to the suspicion that the positive studies with Expiril are more likely if the pharma funded it, therefore suggesting that they were biased. But the negative studies like this and their acceptance for publication can also have a potential of bias, given that the wider use of Expiril could negatively affect the business of the competing industries, such as opiate manufacturers or distributors of lucrative and expensive perineural catheters and pumps to deliver local anesthetics with them. Perhaps the most importantly, the authors of this paper missed the white elephant in the room. In their conclusions, the authors state that compared to plain bupivacaine, liposomal bupivacaine had a delayed onset of sensory block and did not last as long but produced intermittent residual blockage. 
Well, let's examine this information. While the duration of Bipivacaine's action completely ended by 24 hours, subjects who received Exparil continued to experience sensory diminution for up to four or five days in their paper without motor block, which is precisely what a long-acting analgesic in nerve block should achieve, something that no other additive, including dexamethasone and dexmedetomidine can do. Besides, the pharmacological profile and the late release of bupivacaine is designed to do exactly what it did in this study. It just needed to be appropriately dosed for even better and more consistent effect. As you could see in the image, Exparel provided remarkable sensory loss without a motor block, despite not being dosed properly. And why was Exparel underdosed? Well, the authors appear to have disregarded the pharmacokinetic properties of Exparel. They used only one milliliter of Exparel, reasoning that it contained a similar dose of bupivacaine to three milliliter of plain bupivacaine, 0.5%, both amounting to 15 milligrams of the drug. This is incorrect, because the 15 milligrams of plain bupivacaine is immediately available for nerve blocks, whereas the bupivacaine in Exparel is encapsulated in liposomes and releases only a small amount of drug over 72 hours. Therefore, an equipotent dose of Exparel should have been several times higher to mimic the effect of blame bupivacaine accurately. But get this, most negative studies on Exparel have not considered this and dose it wrongly. Therefore, the authors here reason wrongly and bias the study against Exparel unknowingly. In fact, I believe that nearly all negative outcome studies on Exparel should be questioned and the ones on unapproved indications without established doses should be retracted. Research should determine the ED95 for all neural blocks for which Exparel should be approved. We should engage in studies to determine the best modes of its application, the best techniques of administering Exparel for the best results, and how to dose Exparel rather than discrediting the drug based on results in unapproved indications without proper dosing or wrongly concluding its intraoperative effectiveness based on sensory testing in volunteers using an unapproved and underdosed neuroblock model. Returning to the summary statement of the paper, if the authors had appropriately dosed Exparel and obtained positive results, the journal's peer review process likely would not have allowed them to make definitive statements about the drug's suitability as a sole anesthetic agent for intraoperative regional anesthesia. That was never one of their outcome variables. However, given the apparent collective negative stance towards Exparel, any negative stipulation about the drug appears to be allowed. In summary, until better long-acting pharmacologic agents are available, Exparel represents the most significant advance in the local anesthetic pharmacology in the past 25 years. Without ability to prolong nerve block analgesia, regional anesthesia remains limited and may even eventually fade out with the development of better systemic and infiltration of multimolar protocols. We should critically appraise the negative studies and conduct studies with Exparel to determine the best doses, volumes, indications, and techniques of administering Exparel for the benefits of patients and the future of our subspecialty. We would love to hear your experience of using Exparel for various indications and whether you think that Exparel should be approved for all neuroblock indications. So feel free to add your thoughts and feedbacks in the comments section and be sure to subscribe to the channel and never miss the future videos. Until next time.